I can't do it anymore. I, I cannot do it any longer. Arc System Works has finally just put the straw that broke the camel's back. It's There's straw all over the place. It's a goddamn mess. I have never been angrier than I am right now. I recorded Nate Talks yesterday. Which was in regard to Central Fiction. Because there had been a bunch of things announced for it. Etc. Etc. And then I come to wake up to find out. There's a new fucking character. At the end of story mode. It's useless. I can't fucking post a Nate Talks. It doesn't feature discussion. Regarding the brand new fucking character. That everybody's looking at. And everybody's like hey check this out. I hadn't checked it out yet. It wasn't around then. They're ruining my life. They're doing this intentionally. They're spying on me. They knew. They knew. I had recorded a Nate Talks prior to this. They knew. I was planning on posting it. They know. If they put that character out right now. That's irrelevant. Gone. Wasted time. Motherfuckers. <sighs> so let's hop right into it. New character. Susanoo. Uh, the, now granted that is just, as far as I'm aware, now I may be completely ignorant in regard to this because this is kind of more story related details that I may have gotten wrong, you know, but I'm pretty sure that the Susanoo armor is what Hakuman wears. Um, but there was more history behind that than just, hey, Hakuman wears it. It used to be worn by Tarumi when he was still one of the six heroes and then, you know, shit happened, I don't fucking know, and then... Jin got thrown in there. Spoilers. And now he's Hakuman. Um, but so, now, at the I guess at the end of story mode, you unlock Susanu, which is the Turumi version of the armor, uh, at the end of story mode. Which, you know, now I'm going to kind of have to sit through story mode. Because as far as I'm aware, well, not as far as I'm aware, he doesn't, he looks like a legitimate character. Like, the first time I kind of saw him, I kind of just thought initially, like... This dude looks like a boss character. He looks like the kind of character that you would put in the game to, like, entertain people, but that was not balanced with a competitive, uh, mo com well, that was not balanced with some sort of, you know, like, a competitive character set in mind. Um, but there's been further footage posted, and it, it, it looks, doesn't look like it'd be something that people would just see and be like, nope, banned, nobody can use him. Looks fair, as far as I can tell. I mean, he looks very powerful. His, his damage output definitely seemed above average. Um, I'm interested. I'm very interested because, I mean, number one, he's very animalistic in nature. And I've mentioned multiple times in the past, that is the kind of thing that I'm generally drawn to towards the more kind of vicious and brutal movesets. Um, that's just, you know, what appeals to me when I'm looking at a fighting game character. And it seems to be what he encapsulates very well. So I am interested, I've noticed some, you know, one of the things, one of the big things that I would like to understand more of, which I'm sure there's probably been discussion already from elsewhere that I have not been privy to myself because I haven't bothered to look it up. Um, he has like, I would say, I don't have it directly in front of me, but I would say like 10 little icons that are kind of like right above where his meter is that all have locks on them. And it looks like every single time, I can't tell if it's every single hit he gets or every single move he lands. So the difference there being if he has a move that does... Well, so let me just explain the mechanic first. Every single time he lands a hit, uh, the highlight there's a little highlight around one of those icons. And it moves uh, every single time he lands a hit. And so the reason why I mention that is I don't know if it's in regard to every single move he uses. Or if it's every single hit. So like if a move does move hits two times... Does the icon move forward twice, or does it only move forward once? That's why I mentioned uh, that kind of thing. I didn't really notice because I wasn't paying perfectly close attention. I watched uh, Jordal posted a combo video, but I wasn't really paying that close of attention to everything. It was just kind of like, oh yeah, this looks really cool. I'm interested, and I would like to try this out for myself. Uh, but that was the extent of you know how in depth I looked at it. But so you know, it depends to kind of you know the things that I'm looking at. Either number one, whenever either it does nothing to the actual moves themselves so as far as i'm aware it looks like so i mentioned the icon moving it looks like whenever he lands a d move whatever icon is currently highlighted then gets unlocked and i don't know if it's like so for instance bang i believe when you have his seal set now number one if you have all four of them he gets a brand new super that is otherwise inaccessible 
but I believe each one of those also causes an additional effect when he's in overdrive, and only in overdrive. I believe that's how it works. And so I don't know if it's something like that, where like each icon unlocked boosts him in some manner. Uh, either, you know, maybe it's only overdrive, or maybe it's just permanently, maybe it only applies to his D moves. Don't know that stuff yet. But it's something like that, where it provides additional effects, or just gives him some kind of passive boost. Or alternatively, they do nothing but once you unlock all of them, he gets some. He gets something from that. Those are kind of the two possibilities that I'm looking at in terms of what those could potentially mean. Uh, but yeah, it's you know an interesting mechanic. Seems unique, and like I mentioned, he's just he's very animalistic in nature, and that's the kind of character I look for. So I'm definitely interested in playing him. We'll see how it goes. It's a little sad that I've already seen more footage of Susanoo, a character that nobody knew really existed until, like, yesterday, than I have of Mai, who has been announced for, like, what, a month now? Cool? But anyway, so that was obviously the big thing that's come out recently. The other stuff, Mori recently did an interview uh, that's been, tra well, I, I shouldn't say translated, I don't have, like, a transcript or anything in front of me, but he mentioned some specific things. Number one, there is no extend version planned for Central Fiction, because... Whenever an extend version has come out, it has been a furtherance of the story. It's always in clay, you know, despite also featuring a balance, uh, rebalancing, it still featured its own story, its own um, moving forward of the story with, you know, new characters, stuff like that. But he says the story is finished. Like, Blaze Blue's story is done, and thus no extend version, because there's no more story, there's no more plot to advance. There's nothing more to do with the story. It is finished. However, they've done that. And, um, now the question there remains, like, so if there's not going to be an extend version, because he did also mention that he's not putting the stamp on Blaze Blue specifically. He's not against doing rebalancing somewhere down the line. He's not against potentially adding new characters, which may or may not suck depending upon what your feelings are regarding DLC characters and whether or not you are interested in those DLC characters. Because if this is the end of Blaze Blue, which I doubt it's the complete end of Blaze Blue entirely, but if it's the end of this storyline, like let's say, for instance, one of the things that I think could happen here is that they've been using the base foundation system for Blaze Blue since Calamity Trigger. Like there hasn't been any upgrade. Um, to, you know, any of the, it's any of it, it's been consistent, so it's not really fitting for the next generation stuff. So if they wanted to put a stamp on Blaze Blue and then build a brand new Blaze Blue from the ground up, befitting, you know, like maybe the new, what, whatever, is it just called the PS4 Pro or whatever, the Xbox Scorpio or whatever the fuck they're calling it, all that stuff then it's a good time to end the story and just, you know, move on, maybe do some other projects in the meantime, and then revisit Blaze Blue with a smaller cast and then, you know, build it back up like they did with the original Blaze Blue, like they're doing with Guilty Gear now. That's one possibility. The other possibility is, like I mentioned, maybe Blaze Blue's just over. Because Blaze Blue was generally accepted as, you know, the purpose behind it being made was because they didn't have the rights to Guilty Gear, thus they couldn't make a Guilty Gear, so they had to come up with something else. Now they have Guilty Gear. Maybe they don't want to have two active fighting games to be working on. Well, actually, do we really want to call it three since we never got Persona 4 Arena 2.0? Persona 4 Arena Ultimax 2.0? We never got We never got that. I don't think we're ever going to get it. Uh, so I, I don't know if you can consider saying they have three active fighting games, but maybe they only want one. Maybe they want to just put their entire focus on Guilty Gear and then have the rest of their you know employees and other teams working on something else that isn't a fighting game and that's what, <coughs> that is what Mori mentioned is that he's working on a new project that is not a fighting game and so we'll see if that changes in the future we'll see if this is you know the end of blaze blue period there's not going to be any more iterations that's entirely a possibility uh you know so we'll see how that goes but again so the thing there is that if a dlc character comes out your only option is to purchase that dlc and if you are against dlc which in general I don't really have anything for or against DLC. I think it can be used very well. I also think it can be used incredibly poorly. Uh, in terms of Blaze, like I have nothing against DLC characters in and of themselves. But eight dollar DLC characters, that's another issue. Like people shit all over uh, Street Fighter Cross Tekken is usually used as a very common example. 
because a bunch of those characters were available were on the disc fully completed so you're basically just downloading an unlock code more so than you're unlocking than you're downloading characters that was a big sticking point with a lot of people a lot of people were very very angry about that entire thing but you're looking at it right like if you were, the DLC characters cost $20 you're getting 12 of them if I remember, was it 8 or was it 12 can't actually remember but anyway you're getting them for like i around a dollar each ish sorry a dollar each you're getting them around two dollars each at that point for each character alternatively you look at our system works and i think i'm not actually sure about guilty gear persona 4 arena's uh dlc characters were five dollars but they were also all free first and then they became five dollars so like i don't fuck it but all of blaze blues dlc characters have been eight dollars and like that is just for a single character nah not me so even if it's like even if it's a character that looks like oh man i want to play this i absolutely want this character everything that is about them i want it i will not download it for eight dollars that will not happen i don't care who it is I don't care how appealing they look. I don't care if Arc System Works designs it inherently for me and even puts in the fucking description of the item, Nate, we made this for you. I'm not spending $8 on that shit. You can put a stamp on it right now. My proof. What am I trying to say? My seal of, you know, like my statement or whatever the hell I'm trying to say. I don't even know. I got the words on the tip of my tongue, but I cannot think of them properly, so who gives a shit? But I guarantee you, I'm not downloading the character for $8. It's nothing to do with, you know, whether or not I can afford it. It is purely based upon principle. That is an absurd price for a single character, and I will not pay it. You cannot make me. And so for people that, are, you know, have a similar mentality to me, this is the final version of Blaze Blue. Your only chance to use that character is by downloading them. You have no other choice. And so that's a bit of a problem. Uh, but yeah, so anyway, what else did he mention in that? There were other things that he mentioned. I think I actually kind of went through them all through my rambling, or at least through all the important ones. Like he mentioned one other thing. I think this is one of the most satisfactory endings to a fighting game story that's ever happened. Like, I don't know about the rest of you. But I have never seen a fighting game story end. Never. Because every fighting game is basically setting itself up for further versions of said fighting game. There's never an ending to it. So, like, being the only fighting game story that's ever ended, thus being the best by default, is not exactly an achievement. Is kind of what like that's kind of what went through my head. I could just be being a massive asshole about it. I don't know. Obviously, I haven't even experienced it. I haven't even experienced Blaze Blue's story for myself. Uh, so it doesn't. Really, my opinion is completely irrelevant in the matter, regardless. But I just thought it was kind of an amusing thing because it's like, I mean, yeah, pretty much no other fighting game story has ended, so that's not a hard thing to do, bruh. Just me being an asshole, no big deal. What else was there? I think that was basically it in terms, like, obviously the big thing. Oh, a lot of people are looking at the lack of a, an extend version of a lack of any kind of further version as a confirmation. No chance of a dub. Like, that's it. There's not going to be an English dubbing for this game. And I actually saw something, like, somebody posted on Reddit. I don't know. I don't... I didn't actually look at any follow-up about whether or not anybody called this person out on this. But basically saying... Do not buy the English version. Do not support Axis. Do not support this lack of a dubbed feature. If you want to buy the game, import it. And so I'm sitting here like... If you import the game, you are purchasing straight from the source of the decision to not dub the game to begin with. <laughs> like, you're actually giving them more money. I don't actually know how... Uh, licensing where i'm sure it just depends contract to contract but like you either have you kind of have one of two scenarios either a company just pays an upfront fee to basically say we want to distribute your game we will pay you this many dollars but all the profits are our own from there like you you know we buy the game at this price from you we also buy you know the licensing fee from you but you do not see a penny of our proceeds like we keep all the profits alternatively you get rid of you know like you we have to buy the copies from you they probably still have to pay some kind of licensing fee or something like that but you get x amount 
from each cur from each copy sold and we get y amount from each copy sold and that's how it works and so just depending on which it is like you could be giving Arc System Works even more money by importing it than you would if you purchased it from Axis, who had absolutely no say whatsoever on whether or not this game got dubbed to begin with. Like, you're basically fucking over... Regardless of how you look at it, you are directly saying, fuck this company that had absolutely no say whatsoever in whether or not you get the dub. <laughs> and that was just like, how are you this dumb? How can you not understand that Axis has no control over it? And they have not since Chrono Phantasma. Arc System Works pulled that shit back and they said, Nope, all localization is now handled by us. You are no longer, you are just a distributor now. Axis used to do it, but they haven't since Chrono Phantasma. So, I, I don't get it. I don't know what the fuck that person was thinking. But I hope they got blasted to high hell. And many other people understood the same thing. But, you know, like I said, I don't use Reddit, so I don't really know. What else was there? Especially in regard to Central Fiction. I know there was some stuff, there's some personal stuff, but I'm trying to not discuss the personal shit and only kind of talk about, you know, like recent stories regarding it. Oh, oh release date, November 1st for uh, the Americas. <sighs> November 4th for Europe, but that's been confirmed for a very long time. I don't really think there was anything else. Let's go into personal stuff. Monsieur Z Gaming Mole commented on the video about how, like, I was, oh, okay, fuck it, I'll learn Hakuman, why not? It, it was probably a bad time to be doing so because he's changed a lot in Central Fiction. And so I've been critis critical of Blaze Blue rebalancings before, saying that it feels like a lot of the changes are fairly random and they don't really have a cohesive design goal behind it all, and that's kind of uh, displayed most aptly by looking at Continuum Shift to Continuum Shift Extend, and then also looking at Chrono Phantasma to Chrono Phantasma Extend. Basically, like, incredibly simplified. Continuum Shift had characters that were at the top tier who had incredibly strong mid-screen options, great corner carry, great damage no matter where they were on the screen, and that is why they were top tier. And so, to balance that, they basically nerfed everybody's mid-screen options, but they improved their corner game, right? That was kind of, you know, again, that's a vast oversimplification of exactly what happened, but that's kind of what you have to do without getting into character specifics. Chrono Phantasma. The best characters in the game have amazing mid-screen options, great corner carry, um, and just they're getting great damage no matter where they are on the screen. And so then when it comes to extend, again, pretty much all of those mid-screen options were nerfed. A lot of the corner carry was nerfed, but their corner game was buffed to compensate. It's the exact, it's just, you know, it's a repetitive cycle right there. And so when you're looking at that, like, you already knew where you wanted to go. So you had to either decide, this didn't work, we're reverting back to how it was before, or this worked, we should stay with this. But they didn't do either one. They just repeated the cycle. They just kept going. And so because of this, a lot of characters kind of just got fucked with in manners that really didn't make sense, that were needless, and that felt like it was changed for the sake of change more so than it was changed in order to meet a design goal that somebody had in mind for that specific character. And so, you know, being that, having that criticism, now obviously that is not a universally applicable criticism. That varies from character to character. And so, for instance, I've never liked the changes they made to Tager. Like, Chrono Phantasma 1.0 was the absolute best version of Tager that has existed, and I don't think that's going to change with Central Fiction. But... I will freely admit, and I don't think anybody's going to argue, he used to get like 3.5k or some bullshit from a 5a. From a 5a! Now, there are certain characters that get far more than that, but I don't think anyone's going to argue that that kind of damage from a move like a 5a or a 2a should not be happening. And so that got nerfed in 1.1, but then various other things also got nerfed in 1.1. And also, you know, nerfed even further once you go to extend. Let's just not even talk about extend. Let's pretend it doesn't exist. Because that game fucking sucks, even though I'm playing it again. So whatever, you know, just get done with this rambling and just talk to the people. And don't be fucking mumbling under your breath and being all negative and shit. Show some positivity for once in your life, son of a bitch. So, they nerfed that. 
And I can agree with that. But then there were, again, so many other things that I did not agree with. I don't think there's been a single iteration of Tager that has maintained a consistent design in terms of Atomic Collider. And then you have a move like Gadget Finger, which has remained consistent throughout the entirety of his existence. Or at least since it came into existence and Continuum Shift. And now suddenly in Central Fiction they're changing it. And not only they're changing it, they're basically making it his worst option. This is a move with only one purpose. And they fucking made it the worst at that purpose. Any other move you can use to finish off a combo and get Oki from is now better than Gadget Finger. It's a terrible fucking move that really you should not use unless you c literally can't not use it. And so it's just, you know, looking at stuff like that. It's stuff in... His 720 damage got nerfed even further. The weird ass changes to his 360s that keep happening, like... That kind of stuff is just so baffling. It's just, why? And so that's where a lot of my criticism comes from, is seeing changes like that. Giving Asriel a DP. <laughs> as happy as I am to have that? Why? <laughs> you took it away from him in Growler to begin with an Extend, and then you just give him a new, arguably even better DP anyway? The? I don't get it. So, but then, you know, when you're looking at Hakuman, all of that roundabout shit was to get back to the point of Hakuman. I'm looking at his changes. Now, I don't have all the specific... I didn't look up a legitimate list of exactly what his changes were. I watched Central Fiction videos after learning him in Chrono Phantasma Extend. And I can obviously compare the moves and their properties and what they do. I can't see specific frame data that may have changed i'm not paying attention to specific damage numbers that may have changed or proration things i'm li literally only looking at the properties of those moves and i agree with everything that i see um one well let's just get into the move that really was kind of just whatever either way like it was fine before it's fine now it's i think it's a positive change for him but i also think it's a bit too good his 236b which is his double kick move thingy so, right now, and I think ever since its inception, actually, I don't, I don't think it's changed in terms of how it works. He does that first kick, which is a low, and then he follows it up with a second kick, which you can cancel beforehand to not get this part. But the second kick sends the enemy character flying off. You get a mid-screen wall bounce. You can also follow that up. Like, you can command dash, and then follow it up with a normal, or you can follow it up with a 214A. Like, you know, I mean, there's all kinds of different follow-ups you can do from it. But in Central Fiction, they've changed it so that that second hit, instead of sending them across the screen and getting a bit of a wall bounce, it now just causes a juggle. It just kicks them straight upwards. It's now jump cancelable, which is the, that's the big point which I'm talking about, which it might be too good now. Because uh, it's jump cancelable on both hit and block. Good God, what an amazing pressure tool. Um, but yeah, so that change is like, I think it was fine before. It might be too good now, but time will tell. But then you have his um, 623AA follow-up, which right now in Extend, it launches characters away to the point where, like, without meter, you can't really viably follow it up. There are a variety of ways you can do it with meter. My favorite so far is 4-dash into Hotaru while he's still airborne during his 4-dash. That's my favorite version of the follow-up. Against certain characters, like, I think Rachel... May, I, I know it works on a Raccoon because that's a that's a challenge mode combo. I haven't tested it, but I know certain characters like Bang and Rachel have larger horizontal hurt boxes when they're being juggled than most of the other characters, so it might work on them as well. But th uh, those characters, you can potentially jump afterwards. It's not jump cancelable, but you can recover in time and jump and land a JB after that. But it's just, it's not very consistent. And for a move that's kind of like your most basic launcher... For it to not function very well, for it to be really awkward to hit confirm, I hated it. I really did not like it. They've changed that. It basically, as far as I can tell, it basically sends them straight upwards now. And I'm not sure if they made it jump cancelable or not. I didn't pay that close of attention. But they definitely made it so they're much closer. It's much easier to confirm. And that's an amazing change to me personally. Like, I love seeing that. The other thing, his 2C. So it's like, he basically does this massive uppercut slash with his sword. And it's like, if you hit somebody that's grounded, they just kind of flinch back a little bit, and that's that's all. That's all that you get. But in Central Fiction, it actually serves as a launcher. So you can actually use it as a grounded confirm to then confirm into an airborne juggle, which vastly increases his meterless potential, which is something that I think 
is very, very good for some for a character that is so reliant upon meter and is very reliant upon getting airborne juggles in order to maximize his damage. Now he has a meterless way to... Well, I shouldn't say he has a meterless way to do that because I think it's only possible to combo into it from meter. Um, maybe off of various counter hits, like he could probably do like a 6A counter hit into 2C or a 6C counter hit into 2C. Well, 6C causes... Well, whatever. Um, but majority of cases like you can't chain into it with you know like a 5a 2b 2c or something like that but to see that you know like again it's just it's a change that i completely agree with i don't think it's too powerful but it makes sense in the context of the move and it helps the character and betters the character without changing him completely and so those are the kinds of changes that i absolutely agree with they don't feel like change for the sake of change they feel like they're strengthening a character's options that needed strengthening so that's a good thing. So, you know, it's just the contrast between what I perceive. Now, obviously, this is opinionated. I'm not, you know, I can't specifically say that. Obviously, there will be people who disagree. But I'm looking at one, you know, again, all the stuff that I said about Tager, where I hate every change. I don't understand why they made the changes to begin with. Then I look at Hakuman. I like every change, and obviously that's helpful. But I also understand why every change, oh, except for again the two, three, six B part, like it didn't really need to be changed. But if they wanted to give him a bunch of launchers, it kind of makes sense. But in terms of you know the age, the uh, goddamn it, six, two, three AA, that working as it does, uh, the two C, like it just it makes sense for it to work that way, and it's he's better off because of it. So I absolutely agree with those kinds of changes. Was there anything else? Story time. <laughs> oh boy. So, for those of you that do not do any kind of capturing from a gaming console using a uh, game capture device like the Live Gamer Portable that I use, you have to plug in an HDMI cable in order to do that. And there is a system in place called HDCP, which I have to imagine is just high definition copyright protection. Like, that makes sense. I'm not sure if that's actually what it stands for, but that is what the system is called HDCP. And on the PS3, it was natively enabled, and there was no way to disable it. So you had to kind of jump through hoops. You had to either record through component cables, or, for instance, Aver Media made a specific device that you could plug into the LGP that kind of, that sort of acted as a component without actually, with a component input, without actually having to plug in component cables. Um, but in the PlayStation 4, it's a toggleable feature. But certain things that you can use, for instance, Netflix, which is what uh, was the reason why I had to turn it back on. I usually have it turned off, but if you want to watch Netflix, you have to have it turned on. So they can guarantee, at the very least, you're not capturing through uh, a capture card of some sort. And so I mentioned, you know, I've been watching Luke Cage recently. Now, I usually watch it on my computer, but if I have to do work on my computer, I can't really viably watch it on my computer as well as do that work. So... Fuck it. Let's, I usually use my Xbox as my uh, Netflix machine, but I think you need... I haven't actually checked, but I believe you need Xbox Live Gold in order to use Netflix um, on Xbox Live, and I don't have Xbox Live Gold anymore, so I just figured I'm not even going to test it, not even going to bother. I would, that would require switching around cables anyway, and I'm far too lazy to do that. Let's just enable HDCP on my PS4 and watch some Netflix. Now, this is important because... Sat down yesterday to record some Blaze Blue, <laughs> and I could not get it to work. Nothing was erroring. Nothing was showing up as like, sorry, such and such is wrong. You need to, you know, a cable is misplaced or something. I was getting nothing normal in terms of like I wasn't getting any kind of image uh, output to my computer. Nothing was happening. Nothing was capturing. I was just getting a blank black screen with no sound, and I'm just sitting here like. What the f So anyway, I go through all of the... Because my the live game portable is fucked up occasionally. My computer is also fucked up occasionally. So I went through all the troubleshooting stuff I have learned over the years of using this thing in order to try and fix it. Nothing worked. Nothing. And so finally, I'm like, alright. Let me uninstall everything, reinstall everything. That's kind of like, you know, the last kind of hope to make everything work again. And so I set all of it up, put it all in motion, went, you know, did some dishes, did some various other things around the house. Took me around 10 minutes. 
And then I come back, everything's ready to go, still not working. Son of a bitch. Alright, so let's do some other things. I want to just, you know, check some stuff that's going to take a little bit of time in order to properly function. Uh, so I sat down, because despite all of that, despite it not working, not giving me anything to capture, computer side, it was still outputting fine to my television. And so I sat down and I worked on Hockelman's Challenge 20, because I hadn't sat down and tried it since the last time I recorded um, and so it didn't take me long, it took me like five minutes, and then I completed the comment. I was like, hell yeah, awesome, fantastic. I didn't exit out of the challenge screen. I left it there because the intention was, after I finally get this fixed, I'm going to leave this little, you know, you succeeded screen, go back in, because once you complete those that, like, don't have a specific set of instructions that you have to follow, it's just like, do 12,000 damage here. They have their own set solution, but that's not the only solution to the trial. And obviously mine was different from what they had. And so I was like, alright, I'm going to show this off. I'm going to brag because I'm awesome like that. Because my Hakuman's the best in the world and can't nobody argue that. All that good stuff. And But then I was also going to show the demonstration of their own personal combo. And you know, look at it myself, see whether or not it appeals to me. But then I figured out, you know, after it sat here for a little bit, like, God, I'm such a fucking idiot. Nothing has changed computer side. Nothing has changed lagging or portable side. I enabled HDCP, which prevents me from capturing footage through an HDMI cable. God damn it, I'm an idiot. All I gotta do is turn that mode off. So, I exit out of the game. I enable HDCP. I go, or I disable HDCP. I go back in. I start recording. I'm like, yo, what's up? Let me hit challenge mode. I just beat this. Check me out. I'm a badass. Challenge mode, trial number 20, incomplete. What? Wait, wait, what? But I just did it. I, j I just did it. What's going on? You have to exit out of challenge mode in order for the game to save your progress. I didn't know that. But I've completed it since then. But still. God damn it. All that effort, just to remember, that uh, I, I left an option toggled on on my PS4. And not only that, it ruined my challenge mode progress, man. Just fucking makes me sad. Just makes me sad how stupid I am. So, we're going to end on that wonderful note. Thank you for listening. As always, one more month till Central Fiction comes to me and I can get my hands on somebody. Actually don't know. I really, like, I've mentioned this so often about how I'm done with Tager. I'm never touching this character again. We all know that's bullshit. I'm going to play Tager at some point in time. But I do think, at least in terms of what it looks like so far, Central Fiction's version of Tager looks like my least favorite version of Tager. Period. And so that's not exactly a glowing recommendation, especially in terms of me going back and learning other... Like, obviously I'll always have Asriel that I will want to play. Susanu looking like a really good character. Learning Hakuman. Relearning Bullet. Um, that always, that interest in the back of my head of learning Taokaka... Uh, or Makoto, or Valkenhayn, or Bang, kind of, sort of. Eh. But yeah, like, I mean, you know, there's so many other characters that I kind of want to play and I want to get used to that Tager is really because, you know, looking at this version of Tager and just being like, yeah, I really don't like how they changed him. I just don't like their changes for him. Might just be my least play. Well, I mean, you know, we won't know until I actually get my hands on it. But then, you know, Mai is also there as well, which I have no idea what's going on with her. <laughs> because I don't think it's been confirmed that S is going to be like, you know, uh, shit. Adachi and Marie were in Persona 4 Arena Ultimax, like Sin, Haihun, Raven, all were in Guilty Gear. Was Sin actually? No, it was Elfelt. That was like that. Was Le No, I think Leo was a legitimate downloadable character. I don't think he was ever free. But yeah, so like for the first X amount of weeks after the game was released, that ca that downloadable character is free. And then after that, they become charged. That's what S is. But I haven't seen any confirmation whatsoever from Mai. I don't know if she's just on the disc already. If she's a future DLC character that has to be, like you have to pay for her. In which case, I've already mentioned previously, guess I'll never play Mai. Um, but yeah, so I don't really know how that's working. And I would be... I am interested to know. <laughs> but yeah, so it's, there's a lot of other characters that I'm looking at that I want to have, that I want to use, and Bullet got better. Asriel, I believe, got better. I'm not actually 100% sure 
but from the like his 6B now is so much his 6B is actually useful. Like it's one of his most useful normals now. It went from basically being like yeah, you should probably never really use this aside from very specific situations to use this always. Just just use it. Fuck you. Just press 6B every once in a while. You won't be disappointed. <laughs> um he got his DP. I he has better Valiant charge combos now as far as I'm aware. Like you know, he just it, he looks like he got if he's not better, he's at least not worse. And he's al- he's always been incredibly good, so obviously that still means he is incredibly good. Uh, Bullet got buffed. Did I mention Bullet first? I think I did mention Bullet first. But yeah, Bullet got buffed. Looks like Hakuman got better, but I'm not actually 100% sure about that because I don't know enough about the character. Taokaka, I have no idea. Taokaka is such a... Like, she's always so, so good. But nobody ever actually plays her at her full potential, and so nobody really knows, like, is this character broken or not? <laughs> like, we had Sujikawa, who used her for a while. But he's moved on to other... Like, he used Kokonoe in uh, the early stages of Chrono Phantasma, and then I think he kind of just dipped away for a while. I don't really I don't really remember seeing anything else from him, but then I don't... Like, I think I saw him using Habiki for a while? I'm not sure, but I like he was the only person that ever really showed Taokaka to be the monster she was. And nobody else has ever really taken her to that level again. And so it's like, anybody can look at Taokaka and be like, man, she's so ama- Her normals are amazing. Her damage is amazing. Her setups are stupid. Like, nobody likes fighting her, but nobody uses her either. <laughs> so nobody ever actually knows, like, legitimately, is this character top three? Is she the best? I don't fucking know. But she always feels like she's the best. Um, so I like I don't know whether or not she got better or not through like I do think I kind of remember seeing her extend version and be fairly being fairly unimpressed. Um, but yeah, I don't really know enough to say definitively. Valkenhayn's always been in an awkward position too, like because nobody after he was when he was initially released, he was ridiculously broken. The damage output he had, holy shit fuck everything that that was um and then chrono phantasm 1.0 he was borderline broken like the only thing that really prevented all of the attention from being on him was kokonoe being even worse (laughs) but then in extend they just kind of murdered him and now nobody's paying attention to him and so now again like nobody's really picked him up in central fiction so who knows where he's at there um but yeah anyway i've rambled on for like six minutes longer than when i just said i was ending i'm done Thank you for listening. Peace.